Hello and welcome to this virtual microbit tutorial video. In this video, we will explore how to use Tinkercad, which is free, to create advanced microbit circuits. So if you don't have a microbit expansion kit, you can still create and program all of the circuits online. So what you need to do is go to tinkercad.com and create a free account if you do not already have one. Once you are logged in, you will be taken to this homepage. Normally Tinkercad is made or is used for designing 3D models like so, but the circuits feature is extremely useful in what we will be using today. So go ahead and click on circuits and select create new circuit. Once you have created a new circuit, you have all your features on the right, and then you have the different parameters you can adjust on the top of the screen. You can also code your micro bit and simulate what your circuit will do. So to start, click on basics, go down to micro bit, scroll all the way to the bottom and select micro bit breakout. Once you have dragged the micro bit breakout board to the canvas in the center of the screen, you can zoom out using two fingers on the trackpad or using the scroll wheel on a mouse. You can click and drag to adjust your view. What we're gonna wanna do here is make a couple of adjustments. Uh, I'm, going, I'm going to delete a couple of features here. So I'm just clicking on items and selecting delete. I wanna keep this. I'm gonna delete these wires. And then what I'll do is I will rotate my micro bit using this feature at the top of the screen. So you should have something like this. Now, the micro bit has been insert inserted into the edge connector. What we will do is use wires to connect certain parts of this edge connector to the breadboard. And what we'll do first is I'm going to connect ground, it says GND, I'm going to click once, to the negative pins. You can see when I click there, this entire row of pins highlights, that means everything in this row is now connected to ground. I'll change that wire color to blue. Next, I'm going to do the same thing, but this time I'll connect three volts to this red row. And notice that the entire red row is highlighted and connected. I'll change that wire color to red. So now I basically have two terminals of the battery here ready to go. I have the negative side of the battery in this blue row and the positive side of the battery in this red row. And I can start connecting things to it. So let's find some components to connect. I'm going to need, let's go to all components. I'll need a resistor, so I'll grab one of those and drag it in. And we want this resistance to be 47 ohms. And you should see its stripes turn the same color as mine. And we'll also need an LED. So you might have to scroll down a little bit, but we will drag one of those in. You can choose whatever color you want. I'll use the red. And just like if this was real life, we can take these components like this LED and connect it to the breadboard. So notice I have the anode or the long leg of the LED over here on one side. And then I have the cathode or the short leg of the LED on the other side. The cathode will connect to ground and the anode will connect to three volts. I also need to use this resistor to keep my LED from burning out. So I'm going to connect the cathode through the resistor to this blue row, which is connected to ground. And then I'll use a wire to connect the anode, the long leg, to the red row. So try to mimic this circuit on your own. Again, 
the electricity flows from three volts through the red row, through this red wire, through the anode, through the LED, through the resistor, and then back to ground through that blue wire. Well, let's see how this works. We'll click Start Simulation. And as you can see, the light turned on. That means electricity is properly flowing. And we can click Stop Simulation. Now, you could add more LEDs to this breadboard and connect them in the same way. You'd have to have more resistors, more wires, and more LEDs. But you can add them on down the line until you have a bunch of LEDs. Um, I also want to show you how we can program this LED. So what we're going to do is delete the original wire. And we're going to connect the long leg of the LED or the anode to pin 0 on the expansion board. What this has done is it allows me to program pin 0 to turn this light on and off. So how do I do that? Well, when I click on code, you'll see uh, make code pop up, just like if you were on Microsoft make code. Now what I can do here, I'm actually going to remove this on start block. In this forever loop, I can turn this light on and off. And how I do that is I look for a command called digital write. It's under output. And here it says digital write. I'll drag that in. What digital write does is it tells you which pin you're controlling. So I'm using pin zero, so that's good. And if you want to turn it on to high voltage or turn it off to low voltage. So I want to turn this light on, so high. And I want it to wait for one second. And what I'll do is I'll duplicate these two blocks. Then I want to turn pin P0 to low for one second. So again, P0 will turn on for one second. P0 will turn off for one second. And we can start this simulation and see what happens. and stop the simulation. Again, you can wire multiple LEDs. So again, if I wanted to do um, a green LED, I can just show you right here, actually. I'll copy and paste this. Maybe I want it to be green. I could grab another resistor. And maybe I want to connect the green LED to pin 1 make this wire green. Then I could go into my code. I'll add, I'll just duplicate all of this. And now I can control pin one. When I simulate this, you should see the red light turn on and off and then the green light turn on and off for one second each. So I'll start the simulation. Red light, green light. Red light, green light. And note that this loop will run forever because the code is in the forever block. So that's how you use uh, the circuits tool in Tinkercad to build your micro bit circuits, even if you don't have a micro bit available or an expansion kit. Uh, really great for remote learning or great for classrooms that don't have enough expansion kits to go around. Thanks for watching and happy coding and wiring.